I want to take a couple of seconds to discuss Kevin Durant. I've, uh, I mean, I've had issues with him. First, first of all, though, I, I respect him as a player. He is clearly one of the best in the league right now. I don't know if I'll say number one. He's definitely top three. I think it's between Durant, LeBron, and Kawhi. But with that, all of that aside, let's talk about the issue of him going to Golden State in the first place and chasing rings, as people say it. And I put that in quotes only because, you know, I'm hearing different things from a lot of people. Because first of all, a lot of people, I've heard the argument, well, chasing rings, isn't that what we're here for? Does anyone go into the season not wanting a ring? Well, specifically what we're talking about in this case is, I've seen a ton of people, a, a ton of different players, have got, have decided, like, oh, it's the end of my career, I don't want to retire without a ring, so as they're getting older, they're willing to take le to go take less money and a reduced role to go to a good team, hoping to finally get that elusive ring that they've worked so hard for. And that's what makes Durant's situation a little unique. It's not like he's the first person to ever do it, but it is something that a lot of people look at and it'll say, I think the same thing happened with LeBron, where he, where he looked at his options and decided, you know, I'm tired of not being able to win on this team. I'm going to go to a good team and be great. The difference here with Kevin is that that differs slightly from what most other people do, is that the Warriors had been to the finals twice already. That's the thing. And that, that's why I'm so shocked that there are people right now who are shocked at how well they play without Durant. And that Barkley even said they couldn't win a series without him. And then they go sweep the, sweep the Blazers. And everyone's shocked. But they don't have Durant. But that's the problem. That's why people were mad at him. That's why a lot of people have lost respect for him. Because he was on a team where he was the face of the franchise. And then he chose to go to Golden State and, like, I don't want to call him a rotation player. That's oversimplifying it, but he's expendable. And I don't mean that in an insulting way, but look at how the Warriors are performing without him in the playoffs. They actually have more losses with him in the lineup than they do without him. But it, it's a deceiving stat. It's a deceptive stat, but still, it's, it's a fact. And, but with Kevin Durant, is he one of the best players in the league? Yes. But is he the most important player on the team? I mean, there, there are arguments that can be made against that. So, I think that's the issue that a lot of people have. And, on a personal level, I don't care. Like, it's your life, you do whatever you want. That being said, between the two arguments, I definitely tend to agree with a lot of the haters who are going after him. Just because, like, he's still Kevin Durant no matter where he plays. But, once again, you went from being the face of the franchise, someone who, you know, he was one of the main reasons the Thunder did get to the finals that one season. Though it helped that they had both Westbrook and Harden. And who'd have known back then that all three of those guys would be MVPs at some point? Like, what what happened with that franchise? They were they were in a great place, and then they just let it go. But but still, just I, I understand this point of view very strongly that people that people have these very harsh and you know I, I understand maybe a little. Uh, I'm, uh, this is why I prefer to edit videos, just because I'm, I'm not that eloquent. But I understand this point of view, that at times harsh and overly critical, but still factual. That why people don't like what he did, because he's a guy in the prime of his career, one of the best in the league, willing to go to a team that 
already has a championship that has already been to two consecutive finals and just be a piece of the puzzle. That being said, what the Warriors are proving right now, something that people seem to have just forgotten, you know, Kevin Durant make them, made them bulletproof. But it's just like Superman. You know, even if he's not bulletproof, he's still got super strength, laser vision, ice breath, and he can fly. Same thing with the Warriors. I mean, Steph Curry won two league MVPs before Kevin Durant got there. Klay Thompson has broken multiple MV multiple uh, NBA records. They've still got a great fucking team. And so, when it comes to the finals, if I'm being completely honest, there's a chance I'm not going to look at a single game. I have not watched a single game of the NBA Finals when the San Antonio Spurs were not playing. Because the Spurs are my team, I always know exactly who I'm going to root for. And this year is one that, like many others, no matter who loses, I'll be happy, and no matter who wins, I'll be a little ticked. I mean, I don't hate the Warriors, but I am tired of seeing them win. Especially since the main reason they've made it to five in a row, let's be honest, it is Durant. Even without him, they're still good, but like I said, he does make them bulletproof. And that's one of the things that, with this, I'm a little more conflicted and maybe more inclined to actually take time to watch a game or two. And I feel like no matter who wins... It's going to change the conversation of the end of, around the league, and it's going to drastically change the outlooks for next season and free agency. Because if the Raptors go on to win a championship, they end up looking like the, like the greatest decision makers ever. Uh, is the, the GM, is it still Ujiri or that guy? I, can't, I don't remember his name, but you know, they, they broke a record with regular season wins. And then they just sold the farm. And everyone's like, what's wrong with you? You get rid of your head coach and your best player. But all, every move they made seems to be paying off huge right now. So if they're able to finish by taking down a team that's won three of the last four titles, who's there for the fifth year in a row, that's huge for them. And at the same time, the, and at the, same time the Warriors, you know, there's no guarantee that Kevin Durant won't play, but if he doesn't play a single game and they still manage to go on and win their third straight title, you know, very few teams have repeated. It definitely changes. It brings up a lot of those. A lot of those. Uh, a lot. The conversation around him will intensify. And so for me, like, who do I want to win? It honestly, it depends on Durant. If he does play, I'll go ahead and root for the Raptors, hope that they win. If he, if he doesn't play, eh, I wouldn't mind seeing Golden State get another title because fuck Kawhi. And a lot of people have been telling me, ah, don't be mad at him. I'm going to be mad at him for a little while. Like, I know that this isn't the... San Antonio right now is kind of split on Kawhi. There are a lot of people who blame the organization for letting him go. Some of them say, hey, he's still under contract, make him play. Make him play for you one year a year, and this could have been us. But for me, I'm like, if he doesn't want to be here, let him go. We got a half decent trade. We were def we're definitely worse off than we were before. But I mean, he didn't play last year. We made the playoffs. He didn't play for us this year. We made the playoffs. We were still putting ourselves in a position to succeed, though the future may not look as bright as it had two years ago. But still, like, for me, I'm a little biased in this. I've been, I'm born and raised in San Antonio, been a Spurs fan my whole life. The majority of times when people leave this organization, they're sad. And it's with, and it usually happens with great regret. And they miss us more than we miss them. Kawhi is one of the only times that that, that, that narrative has ever been different. Where he leaves and he's better off without a, without us and we're just left bitter you know and what the, it's hard to understand the narrative I wasn't in the locker room I wasn't part of all of it but from my perspective the facts that have been put in place it almost feels like Kawhi just like quit on us 
Like he just got tired of us and he he quit on the team. And I don't know how healthy he was last year that I but you know, it felt like he just quit on the team. That's what it felt like from my perspective. And so it's it's one of those things where when he retires, yeah, I'll forgive him eventually. But for right now, I'm allowed to hold on to that anger just a little bit. And I don't want to cheer for him. There are some people who are like, well, he's still Kawhi, so I'm, I'm always going to cheer for him. And I'm like, fuck it. You're, you're wearing a different uniform. I have no obligation to stay loyal to you. I, I was rooting for the franchise long before I ever knew who the hell Kawhi was. So... I'm going to keep rooting for my franchise. And every other player in the league can suck it. LeBron James can suck it. Kevin Durant can suck it. I, I'm, not, I'm not discriminatory. Everybody in the league who doesn't play for the Spurs can suck it. So, yeah, those are just my thoughts. 